welcome back to the channel. What's We're doing good? something different today. I wanted to just interview my guest here on this What's first up? ever podcast. <laughs> this is Kenny. You've probably seen him a lot from all my dives. He's always catching some crazy fish. Oh yeah. This guy pulls out some big lings, just pulled out an insane sheephead from NorCal and just one of my favorite buddies to dive with, super chill. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just gonna be asking you a couple questions. Okay? Yeah, sure. I'm honored to be the first guest. <laughs> yeah. well, what's the podcast called, by the this, way? This is just the Death Affinity, the Death Podca Affinity Podcast. podcast. Oh, yeah. I right. wanted to do this a similar video with Tuan last time we, we came down for lobster, but we just ended up just getting into some different conversations. I don't think I even had a setup for my dashboard. But my first question is, how did you get started spearfishing? I actually don't even think I know this one. I know how you got started fishing, but not spearfishing. Yeah, so I've been fishing, like, in general, my entire life. Um, and uh, the way I got into spearfishing was I would go to the beach uh, for surfing. I was really into surfing in like 2017, 2018. And uh, I noticed the that some days the visibility was so good that I could see the sea floor and I could see like the rocks and kelp beds and even like sometimes like the occasional perch or fish go beneath me. And I just got really curious to see what was down there. So uh, I went over to, um, what's that shop in Capitola? Uh, not it's a bamboo spear reed. fishing shop. Yeah, yeah. In there's Capitola? like a there's a dive a very small dive shop in Capitola, and I got like a set of beginner dive gear, just basically mares everything. Oh, um, I didn't even know there was a shop in Capitola. Yeah, yeah. So wow. I I got like a whole set of beginner dive gear. Yeah. And uh, I went for my first uh, dive at a beach, and I was actually solo because yeah. I didn't know that much about safety. Um, but I figured since I, I was just near a bunch of surfers and I was basically diving like, like yeah. right next to a bunch of surfers in, in that uh, maybe 10, 10 foot zone. And how much did all that so, gear cost you? I'd say like 500, 600 so 500, bucks. yeah. Yeah, starter set. It's pretty yeah. typical. I think like one of the biggest questions that beginners will have getting into the sport is, how much do I have to spend to get into it? And that's usually what I tell them. I usually say 500. It, it doesn't have to be that much. Yeah. yeah. And then if they want to go cheaper than that, <clears throat> it'd have to be just, you know, browsing through Craigslist, offer up Facebook yeah, Marketplace to get used stuff. Yeah. And even then, this this gear is pretty niche. There's not too many Spiros around, so you still do end up spending a couple hundred. Yeah, but I, I'd say the the thing you should spend the most money on is probably the wetsuit. Yeah, because for sure. the beginner wetsuit I got it's just, it's just like a stock yeah. Mara's wetsuit. It was it was no yeah. good. It yeah, it, it was just not warm enough, and, and the material is not as high quality. Definitely, when we're diving up here and we're just diving in sixty degree water, yeah, you're gonna want a wetsuit that keeps you warm because if your first couple of experiences are just you know, we already have trash fizz, pretty bad conditions. If your first couple of experiences are just you're cold the entire time, yeah, you want to you want to enjoy. Yeah, it. chances experience. are you're not gonna not gonna have too much fun. I know my first couple dives, I was diving with a just a spare suit that one of my dad's friends had, and I was cold every single time I took a dive. It was just yeah. a splash of cold yeah, it's, water. it's not fun, and and like, I got cold. Your breath hold is gonna be really bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, at that point I wasn't even diving at all though, so it was it wasn't too bad. Uh, but I just remember it was cold, and I was I didn't look forward to going with my dad. Sometimes I was like, oh, do I really want to be cold, or do I want to like sleep in and enjoy my morning? Yeah, I mean, you, you need to have gear sufficient for the environment you're diving in, definitely. so you can enjoy it. And how did you find out about spear fishing? Because um, for me. I'll tell you well, really quickly, yeah. I'll tell you about my first experience uh -huh. like with spear fishing. I was at Carmel Beach just with family and I remember seeing this guy just swim in out of out of nowhere. Yeah, this just guy just appeared <laughs> and he was hauling this huge stringer, like one of
one of those rope stringers uh-huh. and just over his back and it had fish all over it and yeah. this guy's walking out of the water and he was like pretty buff and pretty built yeah. he looked like aquaman with a stringer full of fish in one hand and yeah. in the other hand and i'm not joking you i've never even seen this before with anyone else a trident what a trident <laughs> spear pole and so that's, normally that's we insane. see that's the uh, right yeah <laughs> normally we see the flopper tip or we see the yeah the trident three, yeah very rare <laughs> three prong that. paralyzer but this guy had a trident it was probably like and, some old timer uh, yeah or something <laughs> he was just walking out and all of a sudden like out of the blue he just pops up walks out almost in slow motion yeah and everyone on the beach was looking at him and i was like whoa that's something that you could do Mm -hmm. so yeah i I didn't know about i I guess i I had a similar experience i'd um i'd occasionally go to santa cruz and see people uh coming up west cliff with the with like some perch or rock fishing yeah but it's it's crazy now that I think about that because we never dive yeah, West Cliff or dive Santa Cruz because the viz is really bad. Yeah, it's not that great. I dove West Cliff yeah. one time with this one guy that invited me out there. Never again. And uh, let's just say I lost a good thousand dollars worth of gear on the Gosh. on the way back in. <laughs> it was bad and. Uh, at the end of the day, I was lucky enough that it was just the gear that was lost. I got in a bad situation for a couple of seconds, but yeah, Westcliff can be a little rough. So you yeah. would just see people diving. Yeah, yeah. Um, off there's of, like, like a, a road, a stairway. No, there's yeah. a staircase um, that goes down to the, to the beach, or not really a beach, but just down to the surf zone. Uh, and I, yeah, I'd see people walking up the stairs with like a stringer of perch and some small rockfish yeah and how was your first time diving oh and actually no my first time diving was not at and now that i think about it it was actually at west cliff it was at west (laughs) yeah yeah okay and uh it was funny because like my like i told my my i was with my girlfriend yeah and uh i told her since i'm going alone like like you need to you need to like be just watching me from the cliff the whole time so like, so like I had her just like standing there like watching uh-huh. me and I couldn't see anything. The yeah. viz was so bad. Yeah. It was like you couldn't see your hand in front of you. Like yeah. that one time we went to Capitola. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um Did you catch anything? I didn't catch anything. Were you able to dive? Barely. Barely. Did you have enough weight? I, actually no. That was not that was the first dive. issue. I I yeah. think I dove with like 7 yeah. pounds yeah. Of weight. And I, I, I realized I just couldn't get down and I didn't know why. Yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, damn. I think that's the pretty standard experience, especially for us up here where we're diving with seven millimeter suits. Yeah. We just have so much neoprene on that we tend to just say, oh, yeah, 10 pounds should be enough for this. Yeah. And then it's just and also, not, like, so we can't get I down. wasn't, I think at that time I wasn't aware that there's a certain depth at which you become neutrally and negatively buoyant, right? Yeah. I didn't know that. So I was just like, I was diving shallow, like like less than 10 feet, and I was just struggling to stay down yeah. there for even like 10 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. My first time diving was in, at Lover's Point, and same thing, went out with a friend of my dad's. They had gone out previously together, and my dad really liked it, invited me out, and I went with him, I was using some scuba fins, which I highly would Man. recommend not using scuba fins. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> they're dirt cheap, but they're they're not gonna get you they're, anywhere. They're meant for walking on the sea yeah. floor. They're yeah. Not meant for like not swimming. Not meant for diving. Diving. And yeah, I had those fins on. Not enough weight. I remember the mask would fog up a lot. I don't know if I didn't put any like sea drops or any spit in it but it would just fog up a lot and then i wasn't able to dive for the first time i tried to get down and just did the same thing didn't have enough weight yeah and kind of just cruised around floated around with my dad came back in a couple hours later maybe two hours later and then the guy we went with came back in an hour after that and he had a pretty nice collection of fish so we were kind of like how did you see all those fish we saw nothing and it's funny because when you first start out 
you're not used to the search images mm -hmm. of all these different fish so you go out and you don't see all this life that's around you but after you get used to all these yeah. different species all of a sudden they stick out because you know what to look for yeah and that might be a reason you don't shoot anything because you don't you don't know the species enough yeah this happens to me like even when i go to like hawaii yeah like i'm just afraid to shoot anything because I, I don't know what size it needs to be or yeah if, if it's the right species yeah like, you don't even of, know what yeah. you're looking at so once you do see it you got to be really familiar with uh, what you're targeting definitely you definitely and i think one thing too is if you're a beginner be familiar with the regulations things look a lot bigger underwater than they do outside of the water yeah. so you're gonna shoot this rockfish that you think is huge. I don't know if you remember we went to Carmel yeah. that one time and this guy hopped out with the rockfish that was like this big. Do you remember? Were you with No, me? was it a cabazon? Oh yeah, we, saw a, we saw a guy come out with yeah, a tiny cabazon. cabazon. Yeah. Yeah, that guy just like left. Wait, did he, po like, he posted it on Facebook? Did too, he? Right? I don't know. I don't remember, <laughs> I don't remember that. But basically, advice for beginners, know your regulations, Try to estimate like how big that. There's a. I think I have a time limit on this, but try to estimate how big that fish will be, and then give it a couple inches because it's definitely gonna be a lot smaller than you think. Yeah. Okay. Next question is, what is your favorite part of spear fishing? Man, that that's a tough one, but I I I'd say for sure, especially after this last experience, it's the surprises. Yeah. That you get from spearfishing yeah it, it's those those like moments where you're just like in shock by like how amazing yeah like the fish you caught is okay right? yeah yeah so i have a question on here that's gonna be what's the best catch you've ever caught yeah. but but i want you to to just walk us through this last catch that you're talking definitely, about definitely this last catch yeah. um 28 inch 14.2 pound California sheephead yep and in northern California waters at pretty yeah. much the most northern the northernmost point that they exist at yep. California uh, that, that was, was crazy a really crazy catch yeah so you I want you to walk me step by <clears throat> step you know oh, yeah, what story. you're doing everything yeah well actually like during that dive I wasn't really feeling it like yeah because we i were missing a ton <laughs> yeah i was getting a bit cold and like we we were missing blue rockfish that were literally right in front of us yeah so i was a little out of it but and um, you had even shot your spear gun yeah and the spear pole yeah I, I shot my spear gun and then the line just it just the spear just broke right off of the line so yeah. i had to retie it by hand yeah so like the day didn't start off that good but uh we found this really nice uh, zone in like maybe 20 20 ish feet of water um, where there was a lot of kelp and, and uh, vegetation on the bottom um, yeah. and I was just a good spot. yeah I was I was uh, crawling along the bottom looking for uh, olive rockfish trying to sneak up on some olives but uh, all of a sudden I saw this huge black tail just just turn a corner because um, I was near this rock face and uh, I just saw this big tail disappear around the corner and then I, I was like whoa like I thought that was a black sea bass yeah. that went around there so I came back up I told you about yeah, it yeah I was like dude I just saw a huge tail <laughs> so I, I had something that was going on with my gun I think I had just missed another blue and I was like trying to reload it so I was fixing my gun Kenny comes up and he's like dude I just saw something massive and I totally <laughs> thought like what's well, gonna have a massive tail around here you know even these big link cod their tails don't it's get not that, that big. big right yeah their heads they get huge the cabs their heads get huge but their tails not really like the the fins on the side yeah they get pretty big on the cabs once they're like above 20 inches but the tails, I was kind of yeah, like, and oh, it was, I wonder what it was up. Like, like, lings are more like brown olive color. Yeah. They're not black. Yeah, they're not black. I distinctly remember seeing a huge black yeah. tail. So I thought it was a black sea bass. Yeah. Oh, and uh, I was like flipping out. But um, I, I left my gun at that spot. 
and I forget uh, I forget if I followed it into the cave first or, or what but yeah I marked that spot with uh -huh. my gun the next dive I went down I I picked up my gun and then I kept going in the direction that I saw the tail go in and I found I found a really big cave yeah uh, under under a huge boulder and that was and a big cave that was yeah a great big cave yeah it was it was a big cave and uh, I the sur there was a little bit of surge so like it was hard for me to hold my flashlight to shine in there and stabilize myself um, but I I managed to to like flip myself around to get in the right position so that I could peek under there I think I was almost upside down mm -hmm. I, I shined my light in there and I saw I, I saw like like a flash of red yeah like like the whole cave was like black but I saw a flash of red yeah I was like okay yeah okay <laughs> this is happening did you know when you saw that flash of yeah. red that it was a sheep I, I knew it was a sheep sheep head when, yeah. I, when I saw that red so you saw the bar of red yeah yeah okay I so saw, you, you I saw a have bar confused of red. it for like a no. million or anything when I saw it in that cave I knew yeah. it was a big oh, sheep head shoot that's crazy and also I, I saw it's white jaw the white jaw yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, very distinct. Were you nervous at all? I was nervous. It up? I was, I was Especially really after nervous. missing as much I, as we had been. Yeah, I have the video of it actually yeah. that I, I'll probably eventually post. But yeah, yeah, it was crazy. So like I, I had to let go of my. Oh, you know what it is? What? I think have the quick. We've been wondering this whole time why the Insta 360 Ace uh, Pro I shoot on has been turning off from time to time. It's because I have the gesture control on, so if you make a high five, it'll play or stop the recording. I also have voice control on, so it just stopped. It just, uh... Too advanced, It just technology. How do you say it just didn't record anymore? Yeah, mm -hmm. because I said a certain phrase. The trigger words. <laughs> I said the trigger words. And there's also trigger gestures. Okay, so let's not do, do. Yeah, okay. Alright, we figured that out. Okay, keep going. Yeah, so um, I, I couldn't hold the flashlight anymore because like I had to stabilize my body for the shot. Mm -hmm. So I I had to just use my eyesight to try to make out like the position of the sheep head inside the cave, which was pretty dark. Yeah. Um, but I, and I was holding my gun at like weird angle like that right because sometimes you gotta like wiggle yourself around yeah you do and my gun's a 75 yeah so you gotta be at you gotta like contort your body a little bit especially for some of those tight shots yeah for those tight shots yeah but i lined up the shot and i was like pretty sure it was aimed at the like at the sheep at the sheep head's head but like uh at some point like like I couldn't make sure it was like directly on it, and so I, I just took the shot, yeah. and then it just started like flailing, and I, I knew I knew I'd hooked up yeah. at that point. Um, but by then, like I was at the end of my breath hold, so I, I yeah. had to come up, and I didn't have enough energy to like yank it out, so I just left it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's that's when I told you, like, dude, you're not gonna believe this. <laughs> yeah. And even then, he wouldn't tell me what it was, so I didn't know what it was. And then when he took his second dive down to retrieve it, he went into the little cave and pulled out that sheep's head. I was screaming at the top because I just couldn't believe it. I was like, no way this guy is pulling out a massive... It was huge, dude. Yeah. It's like the head on that thing. Massive fish. Yeah. Sheep's head all the way up here. I, I, when I pulled it out, I couldn't believe how big it was. Like, I yeah. knew it was big, but, like, I didn't know it was that big. It was a chunker for sure. Yeah. All right, so would you say that's your best catch ever? Yeah, and I think it's I think it's the biggest fish I've ever caught in my life. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah it's the biggest fish you've ever speared. Yeah, for I sure. Think it's huge. Yeah. It was huge. Because I've caught lings that, that were maybe 10 pounds, but, yeah. like... That, Not, were they longer though? Yeah, they're longer. Yeah. But I mean, wings are just shaped like that. They're, yeah. I don't think but, I've caught a 14 pound thing. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's heavy. Yeah, but that sheep head was just incredible. And it tasted amazing too. Yeah. Just a really memorable fish. And 
I think it's gonna be hard to catch another one like that. Oh yeah, definitely. At the spot that we were at. Especially where we're diving. Yeah. Unless you go further south. I've never even seen hard. another one. No, this was the first. The first sheep set you ever that saw. I've ever seen there. Yeah. What? Yeah. That's crazy. Have you seen them? Out there? I haven't seen them out there. I know Tuan yeah, you pulls got them out. He's pulled two out of the same spot. Yeah. The same spot. But I had never seen one until we went to SoCal, and even then I didn't see them. I'm like I was just talking about for search images. I don't shoot many perch. Tuan yeah. shoots perch all the time. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, I don't look for that type of fish. But when we went to SoCal and we were diving with yeah, they're everywhere, right? Uh, dive Sphere E, yeah, they're they're kind of swimming around everywhere. I didn't notice any, but Tuan saw a big one and called me over, and he put me on that one that day. And I think it was you got like it, right? I think it was like 16 or 18 inches, something like that. It was a pretty decent size, uh -huh. and it was a really good tasting fish. Yeah, but I definitely wouldn't have seen it if it wasn't for Tuan. Yeah. All right, next question is, what is your most scary experience spearfishing? Scariest experience? Because, I mean, spearfishing is a pretty intense sport, right? We're diving, free diving, fully holding your breath, diving all the way underwater. We're diving in these conditions that can be pretty choppy, and pretty murky, uh, some sketch beach entries oh, dude, from here, time here, to time. Here's one. I don't think I told you about this one. Okay. But when we were in Baja, yeah, I chased a flasher down a bit too far. Oh shoot! To where I was kind of uncomfortable. Yeah, like and it's kind of easy to do it down there. Yeah, because you just—it's so clear. You take a dive, you kick a couple times, and you're like, you look at your watch, you're like, wow, I'm at 20 feet, and, and it feels like you've got. I don't know how far feet. I chased that one down, but I don't think I had my float line. Oh, no, I, no. I'm not. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. But like I was chasing a flasher down yeah. to maybe like 50 or something. Uh huh. And I I got a little like like a little scared to be honest. That was the yeah. first time I was like a little panicked. Because yeah. we're in the middle of like the uh -huh. the Sea of Cortez, right? Yeah. And you just realize like how much I'm, deeper and I'm you 50 feet go. down now. Yeah. Chasing this damn flasher. <laughs> yeah. I don't for like uh -huh. you know, for nothing. Yeah. And yeah, I was I was a little sketched out by that, mm -hmm. and I I was uh, definitely beyond my limits at that point. Yeah, but for it, some reason I just like couldn't just let that flasher go. It was probably deeper than fifty feet. 50. Because we're doing more than fifty here from time to time. Yeah, right. You dove deeper dove than 50. fifty, right? Yeah. Here. Yeah. I know in NorCal the deepest I've dove is fifty-five, and Baja uh -huh. I dove I think it was like sixty-eight or sixty-five. Uh -huh. But I wasn't, I wasn't trying to go deep, but it's yeah. just, that's how you dive there. But yeah, lesson learned, just, it's not worth it, just let the flasher go. Yeah, especially when the flashers are like 18 pesos. <laughs> yeah. It's not worth risking your life for. Yeah. But yeah, I, that was one of the scarier not. moments. And yeah. I didn't tell you that I kind of had like a little panic at that moment. Yeah. Yeah, I, did, I didn't know that. Yeah. But I know that... Most of the dives that you did, I was like tracking you the whole time. Yeah, yeah, so most of them, yeah. I, you know, it could have even been a dive that you had done, and I had been watching you the whole time and didn't even realize you had yeah. felt like that. Yeah. So, I but think, I did feel yeah. pretty uncomfortable. Yeah. I think one of the one of the best things about buddy diving is you can commonly get into situations like that whether you're a super safe diver or you're just a reckless diver you're gonna get into situations where you feel uncomfortable and I think that's when buddy diving really <coughs> pays off Definitely. because some people might say oh you know a buddy just gets in the way or oh a buddy is just slows me down or that buddy dives a very different style than I dive they like to explore I like to stay in one spot mm -hmm. And so there's all these cons to buddy diving that people like to put up front, but as soon as you get into that uncomfortable position, which yeah. inevitably will happen, will happen in this sport, yeah. that's when it pays off to have a buddy. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it, diving, diving blue water like that when you've been diving our water here. It's different. It's, it's, it's really different. You're a lot you more likely to, so quick. yeah, you're more likely to like push your limits out yeah. there. Yeah, definitely. Because
because it just feels so effortless to glide through that crystal clear uh, yeah. warm water yeah you don't realize like how deep you're going yeah and you don't have the same like pull down of the weights because you're not wearing as much weight yeah you don't have the same mobility restriction of the seven mil because you're wearing a three mil and i guess when you can't see the bottom you don't really know how deep you are yeah so you gotta either check your watch or like that, right? yeah that's true that is that is pretty sketch yeah i i'll i'll just tell the story about coming in from west cliff yeah because yeah, I've yeah. had a couple sketchy situations that I think I've learned a lot from. This was the most recent one though, and it was probably my most expensive, scary experience. So I'll just share it. I was diving with this diver that's been diving in Westcliff for a while, and he's he's a pretty experienced diver. I tend to be a more nervous diver. I, I tend to be on the very safe side. I tend to look at spots and be like, oh, are, are we sure we should go in here? And a lot of times I will defer that fear to someone else's judgment that is experienced in that particular spot. For instance, when we went with Anthony in that one spot in Monterey and it was, it was crashing a little bit, I was a little nervous going in, but I was like, you know what, Anthony's dove here quite a few times. Like, if he says this is good, it's gonna be easy entry, easy exit. Like, yeah, I'll do it because I know Anthony, I know how he dives, I know he's a pretty safe diver. So yeah, like, let's hop in. And unfortunately, this guy, I didn't know his risk tolerance at all. And that's, that's on me because at the end of the day, it's my choice to go in whether someone says I'm gonna go in here or not, it's my choice to be like, okay, I'm gonna hop in here. But conditions were looking a little sketch. This guy though, very experienced diving the spot, said it was it was gonna be fine. So we hopped in and the way we hopped in was we walked out on this like outcropping of rocks and waited for the swell to come up and then jumped backwards into that's this. Just, that's just not, <laughs> that's just not a good idea. Yeah, it was not. Just how are you going to get idea. back? <laughs> and, but I mean, this guy had told me he'd, he'd done it plenty of times and I was thinking, okay, maybe I'm just being too nervous or too fearful. So I was like, I did the same thing. I deferred my judgment to him, but without knowing what his risk tolerance was. I know what your risk tolerance is. I know what Tuan's risk tolerance is. Yeah. So I know like how to judge a spot based off of you guys vouching for it. But with this guy, totally didn't know that. And I learned that, like I learned I can't just trust a random diver's judgment of it if I've never dove with them before and if I don't really know their diving style. And yeah, everyone's gonna have different diving styles at the end of the day. But yeah, we wait for the swell to come up I threw my banks board in, and as I'm just seeing it get like washer machined around, I'm like, ah, dang, this seems like really crazy, but I know some people in Hawaii, they do that like, stuff like this all the time. So I jump in on the next swell, right? We go out, go down, visibility's trash, right? As usual. It's, it's starting to get like pretty wavy. I don't get seasick at all, so it didn't bother me. That guy also told me he didn't get seasick, and then he starts throwing up. Oh, and he's shit. like, it's usually not like this. <laughs> and as soon as he said that, I was like, oh no. Like, as soon as anyone says, oh, it's usually not like this, it's like, okay, is it really usually not like this? It starts to get really bad. Right. It is like that. <laughs> <laughs> it, start, it starts to get like that. And I'm like, okay, well that entrance was sketch and I barely think I can make it when just the swell's popping up. So if we're getting waves crashing on it too, we're gonna get like plastered, you know? So I'm thinking, okay, what, what beach can we swim to? And the yeah. beaches are just so far and we'd be, we'd be crossing too many breaks that I wouldn't be comfortable taking all my stuff that far. Uh -huh. So I'm thinking, okay, we can go to the nearby beach. And I ask him about it, he's like, yeah, yeah, I go I go to this beach all the time and uh, that's how I exit sometimes. And I'm, he leads the way, he starts swimming that way on his board. I'm on my board, maybe like a couple like meters behind him. 
and all of a sudden this wave just passes us and I see him bob straight up and straight down and then that wave crashes on the sand super hard and I'm thinking nah if I if I do that I'm just going to get hit against the sand so bad I'm going to lose something for sure and the beach area is not very big so I'm I'd be risking I'd be kind of risking it with the rocks too so decided not to do that I told them you know what I'm just gonna go out on these rocks and I go out I'm gonna wait for the comp set but then a wave picks me up as I'm like waiting on the edge of the rocks and throws me onto the rocks so I was I was too close to wait for a comp set and yeah just got thrown onto these rocks then I'm just scrambling up one of my fins gets ripped <clears throat> off and these were pathos carbon fiber fins around $350 so I just I see this $175 fin just just Drift leave away. and I'm like I'm never gonna see that again whatever it's not on my mind my banks board is flailing around on the back but I'm kind of just trying to focus on getting myself situated and then I get hit by another wave while I'm on these rocks and I flip into like a little ditch in the rocks where I don't know if you've seen sometimes when the water comes in a lot at a certain point it will exit a certain point too and it creates these like tunnels hole. yeah yeah like tunnels in the rocks yeah, I, know. I get flipped into that oh man that's a bad and spot and I've got my weight belt still on and I've only got one fin so I'm getting pushed down into this hole with just one fin my weight belt still on and I'm trying to scramble up the rock still but I'm getting pushed underwater and I start taking in water and I realize you know what I need to take my weight belt off right now so I'm fumbling with my weight belt almost have it off and finally get a good grip on the rock just throw myself over and at that point I had lost my second fin it was gone I didn't what? care because I had already spent 10 seconds like under the water just getting pummeled around in the rocks my wetsuit's ripped up i have a huge gash <laughs> like Another around gash. 12 12 inches of v like 12 inches 12 inches and uh, that's I, brutal man. i see my i see my board getting tumbled around and i'm i'm like i've got to save it so i put my stuff down on the rocks which i shouldn't have done my hammerhead mask oh, around a hundred dollars my Mares snorkel oh, damn, around $45, really my <laughs> GoPro housing mask around $40, Man. my GoPro 12 around $400. I put them down on the rocks where I thought they'd be okay and I go grab my banks board which also has a lot of my video stuff in it and so I didn't want to lose that and I didn't want it to go back in because if it went back in I was like I'm not going to hop back out there mm -hmm. just to try to get it. And I grab the banks for it. I'm able to get it in. But as I get it in, I have it in one hand. I see this huge wave coming, pushes the banks for it kind of out of my hands. And at the same time, I'm like reaching for my mask and it's inches away as a wave takes it away. So I lost a ton of gear that day. That was probably the most recent sketchy situation that I've been in. Yeah. And yeah, that sounds rough. It was expensive. Yeah. It's like one of those type of days that you go home and you're asking yourself am I not being cautious enough with this sport especially for me this is a sport I see myself doing for decades hopefully and I was like I've really got to change something because there's no way I can have a sketchy situation happen one week and then like three weeks later get myself into another sketchy situation I mean, you can get pretty so, badly injured getting yeah. smashed on the rocks yeah so that was my my most recent one. So, uh, yeah, spearfishing can be can be pretty dangerous. You really have to trust your intuition, and you really have to know the conditions of wherever you're diving. I mean, it's an yeah. extreme sport, so yeah, you got to take safety very seriously. Very very seriously. Speaking of all the gear that I've lost, <laughs> the next gear. The next question is. What is your favorite piece of spearfishing gear that you'd recommend to anyone? Man. Man, I really love the hammerhead mask. That's yeah. a really good one. 
I, that, that one, yeah. I, I love it. I it's agree. perfectly. I agree. I'd say my spear gun, I think it's the best on the market. We both have it. You have two. Yeah, what spear uh, gun is it? The Pathos Sniper uh, Roller 75. Yeah. Uh, comes in, in many sizes from 50, 55? From 55 yeah, to, 50, I think, to 125. Yeah, it has covers a huge, like, every range, basically. Yeah. And it's extremely well built. It has that, it has that, like, streamlined design to it. To um, track better. Yeah. You're going to be exiting soon, so, in 0.6 miles, just so we don't miss it. Wow, yeah, I'm here. surprised I even realized. Oh, wow, cool. Yeah. Right here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, what? <clears throat> spear fishing. Uh, but yeah, it's a really good spear <laughs> gun. Like you can, you can either use it with the primary band or or just or the, roller the roller band. band. Yeah. The roller band just makes it extremely super powerful. Super strong. Yeah. At, at any length. Yeah. And it just gives you super like really really good range. It can yeah. easily do a double wrap and max it out. Yeah. I have a double wrap on my 55 and yeah. even on the lowest band setting for the roller because you can put the roller on the bottom on three different little like hooks it has which means you have three different powers. I have mine on the shortest one. Yeah, that's that's the another thing power. I love about it. Like it's, it's it's so cool. adjustable. Yeah. Like the Super roller strong. like the roller band you can put it you have three like levels of tension. Yeah, you can get for it. Yeah. And it's just it's just a really good gun. It I don't is. think there's any gun on the market, especially for the price that's that even touches it. Yeah. And then speaking of price, if you guys have never heard of Nudica, this is not sponsored at all. Nudica oh, yeah. Nudica, if you want, please sponsor this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can find me at Depth Affinity or Hideshi Izu. But anyways, no, no, no. <laughs> it's not sponsored at all. It's like it's like Spear fishing AliExpress. Yeah, it's like spear fishing <laughs> AliExpress. Look, when I when I was looking for this gun, because Kenny had bought a 75 centimeter yeah, pathos. Yeah, I bought roller, mine from Spear America. So and I really liked it. Price. But then I looked at the price and I was like, oh, that's a little more expensive than I was going for. So I tried to find a place that was selling it for cheaper, and I found this like one European. <laughs> website as nudica.com that's n-o-o-t-i-c-a.com and it had so many different spear fishing brands at almost 50 percent off yeah it's crazy and, like the price yeah difference. like and they're undercutting like spear yeah. america by like 50 percent yeah i was kind of like is this even legit yeah i was afraid you're gonna get, <laughs> get like scammed or something so i bought a bunch of stuff from there and I was kind of just telling myself, you know, if it doesn't come through, I'll just tell the credit card company it was, That's you scam. know, a, a scam or something. Even though I'm pretty sure that's not how it works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I ended up doing that and it, it came in. So how long I did bought it a take couple. Though? How was the It shipping? came in in like a week. It was pretty yeah. quick. So, so I thought like, it was they're actually coming. shipping from America. I think not they Europe. might have some warehouses warehouse. in the U.S. Yeah. Okay, I gotta get my next set of gear from there. Yeah. So I've bought a couple more things from Nudica since then, and it's always fast shipping. They do have some bad reviews though, because some people will order stuff that doesn't fit. So if you're not sure something's gonna fit or not, don't, I think don't use Nudica. Don't use Nudica. But for something like a spear gun, where you're not gonna have to make a return. I think you're perfectly fine. But yeah, definitely check out Nudica if you're getting any gear. And if you don't find it on there, I am sponsored by Blue Tuna Spear Fishing and you can use Hideshi 10, that's H-I-D-E-S-H-I 10 at Blue Tuna Spear Fishing for 10% off any gear. So there's your there's your sponsored plug of the of podcast. Okay, so you said, yeah, that, that gun. I think in terms of mine, it would have to be the Bubba Dive Knife mm. that I recommend I just got you. it. I just got it. Yeah. Yeah, I brought it. I like on that trip. one a lot. Bubba is a... Filet knife brand. Bubba is a filet knife brand. I think I have another one of their... Bubba is a filet knife brand. Not, not sponsored at all either. But they make just really good blades. And... A lot of spear fishing manufacturers also make good blades, but I like to buy things from companies that are their 
primary product. So if I'm buying a wetsuit, I like to buy it from a wetsuit company, not really a spearfishing company. If I'm buying a, a knife, I like to buy it from a knife company. So that's why I like Bubba. Their fillet knives are really good and their dive knives are really good too. The only thing is I wish that the holder had a locking mechanism instead of just that bungee because sometimes it can be a little hard to fumble around with. I do think the Rife knife is, is slightly better though. Yeah. I think it's a bit sharper. It's a bit like sharper. A bit, bit. It's similar build quality and similar price. Yeah. But I think the Rife one is the best on the market. Yeah. That's the best one I ever had. I dropped it. Yeah. <laughs> you dropped it. Yeah. yeah that's the point. thing about knives too is that you're going to drop them. You're going to lose them eventually. Same with flashlights. Yeah. They, Crazy they that uh, Lou found my flashlight though. I don't know if it was yours. It's, it's mine. You, yeah. yeah. I, I, I distinctly remember like the, the knot on uh -huh. it. And it's oh. exactly the same model that I always buy. You and tied the knot. Yes, I tied oh, that knot. Okay. Yeah, and the bungee crazy. on it, like I, I remember it from that bungee. Wow. And also it's the same, it's the exact same light that I have right now. Yeah. That is pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's insane. All right. The last question I have for you is what tips do you have for beginners trying to get into the sport? Because I'm, I'm constantly getting asked, you know, how to get into the sport or what tips I have. So I was just wondering, like, what, what would you say to someone that j just got into the sport? What's some advice you have for them? I think that you need to just make sure you enjoy your first few dives. Otherwise, you might just quit yeah. spear fishing. Because yeah. I know people that have tried it and then like they just didn't have a really good experience for whatever reason. Yeah. Either they got like a little spooked um, by being being like out in the exposed ocean, maybe yeah. sharks or like something. Yeah. Or uh, they were just like ill equipped, like and got like cold because their wetsuit was not didn't fit well or wasn't thick enough. Yeah. Or uh, I don't know, just they didn't have the right gear. But just make sure the conditions are right for you to enjoy it, mm -hmm. right? Like, so if you really want to get into the sport, yeah. you got to enjoy your first couple dives. I agree. In terms of conditions, what conditions do you recommend going out? Just go out in the flattest conditions possible. So when, yeah. you're, when you're checking these apps, what are you looking for? Like, wind, um, wind speed, what would you recommend? Less than 10 Less miles than 10 hour. miles per hour. How yeah, about, like, 10. wave height? Wave, small height. Swell, I go, like, I don't know, one to two foot day. Yeah. 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 And in terms of like locations, try to go to a spot that's in like a, a bay or like kind of a enclosed like cove that's not very exposed to yeah. the open ocean swell. Yeah. That's going to make it more protective. way more pleasant and uh, it's going to make sure you don't get seasick or thrashed around. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like most of my first dives were at and uh, that that was because I felt safe near all the surfers and there was a nice shallow little kelp bed out there where I just like just uh, shoot some perch yeah get clams like pick up crab and stuff yeah. like that yeah just uh and don't set your expectations too high if, if you're a beginner just go f go for like just go for perch or something just get yeah. some tar target practice yeah I definitely did not think that Lou would be diving as much as he's diving now. Yeah. I didn't think that he would really, like, I didn't really think he'd last in the sport because when he, we first started diving with him, it seemed like he'd get spooked out Spooked. really easily. Mm -hmm. And he just, like, did not like diving in any bad visibility, which <clears throat> if you're diving here, that's what it's going to be. You got to live with it, yeah. And it's crazy because he's been diving a lot more. And the last time we went out to Monterey with him, he just absolutely killed it. He yeah. came in with Full such a diverse catch. Yeah. He had, I think, like one or two link cuts, a ton of rockfish, a ton of perch, and some opal eye too. It was, it was a really crazy stringer. Yeah. And he's gotten, he's gotten very good at it. Yeah, but 
definitely some people do get spooked by it because I mean it is an extreme sport and like in your mind you might think that it's something that you're gonna really like but when you actually try it you find that yeah. it's not for you so. yeah so would you recommend that people rent gear before they go See, that's, pull that's, out and that, buy it that's the thing though like when you rent gear it's probably not gonna be the best gear and it's not gonna fit you that well yeah that's why like and spear fishing is like kind of a sport that you just have to commit to mm -hmm. and you just gotta like I would recommend really only buying the gear and trying it out uh, if you're really confident that you're gonna uh, actually, you're gonna go this one. yeah yeah like you gotta be really confident that you're gonna enjoy it mm -hmm. like personally I'm a really outdoorsy and like adventurous person like I'm, I'm an eagle scout i used to go camping a lot fishing with yeah. my dad um when i was little and is this the right way yeah okay yeah and like i'm i i knew spear fishing was something i was gonna fall in love with before i even mm -hmm. tried it the first yeah. time like i knew like like i just d decided like okay this summer i'm gonna start spear fishing yeah and so I just went ahead and bought all the gear and I fell in love with the sport. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you just know you're going to love it. Yeah. And, but you have to know you're the right type of personality for the sport too. Yeah. That's that's interesting because definitely the first the first times I did it, I was like, I liked Kinda it, iffy. but yeah, it was, it was very 50-50 if I was going to get into it or not. I think... Once you catch your first fish, it starts changing stuff. You, yeah, you need that experience that gets <laughs> yeah. you super stoked. That need, that, right? You need that experience where you're just hooked on it, whether yeah, it's like a yeah. good dive day or... Yeah, so I, I agree. I agree perfectly with because what you recommend. That, that's what spearfishing is about. Like, obviously yeah. not every time you're going to like be insanely stoked, but occasionally you'll have an experience just like last time yeah. that reminds you why you do this yeah. sport that can sometimes be extremely <laughs> miserable right yeah because most of the time we're just freezing our asses off like dealing with like like sinus issues and like uh, like yeah. equalization yeah, yeah. and it, it can be miserable but like yeah you know you do it for those moments where it's just like infinite stoke i agree i agree well that's it for the first episode of the first and maybe only episode depending on who else I can get on this I get of the Deaf Affinity <laughs> Podcast. But yeah, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.